Hey guys, this is Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board certified family physician and a board certified medical bariatrician. And I'm coming to you live from Waddell, Arizona, um, northwest side of Phoenix area. Um, hopefully tonight my bandwidth is a little better and you guys can actually uh, hear me and see me. Um, uh, I appreciate all you signing on, all those who are sharing this out. If you would share this out to your friends and neighbors and all those that you think will, would benefit. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, something really important and near and dear to my heart, something that I think is a challenge for many people that, that we see, um, and uh, that is uh, the, the question, um, what exactly is insulin resistance, what does it do, how, how does it work, um, and why is it important uh, in our lives. Uh, it's late, it's about 9.30 here in, in Phoenix area, um, but I got home a little later in the evening from work and, and had to run some errands, and so um, I'm streaming now. So hope you enjoy. Um, if you are if you caught it uh, on the on the front end, well, you can catch it on the back end to catch the replay. For those of you I'm, uh, that are on Periscope, I'm dual streaming here, and for those on Facebook Live, I'm dual streaming here, and hopefully my stream will stay flowing pretty good. Um, on those on Periscope, hello from Sierra. Vista, Arizona, and hello for those that signed in that I already missed. Thank you for the hearts and thank you for the shares. Uh, again, if you're on uh, Periscope, swipes right or left and you can share this out. If you're on Facebook, uh, hit the share button and share this out to those that you think uh, have insulin resistance or need some help with it. Now, um, on, on Facebook Live, my color is nice and pretty. Uh, on, on Periscope, I look like I'm washed out and uh, near death. So um, I don't normally look that way. 4.30 in the morning in the UK. Well, Glenn, that's awesome. You are um, a, a, you're a trooper. Either you're getting up or you haven't gone to bed yet. Um, either way, I'm impressed. Um, you can probably hear my little dog barking in the background. <clears throat> I may have to grab him here. Um, uh, come here, Charming. Come here, Charming. Uh, Prince Charming is letting us know he wants to go to bed. Uh, wide awake on keto, it says Glenn. All right, well, fantastic. Well, let me tell you about insulin resistance. Number one, insulin is the master hormone. Um, there are 26 predominant hormones that drive or control weight gain and weight loss. And insulin, insulin is essentially the master hormone. It's the hormone that, that really um, is the, uh, the, uh, the big mother that controls them all and, and controls all that. Um, it is the main controlling hormone. And, and in my practice in the last 15 years, I'm a board certified family doc and a board certified ob obesity medicine specialist. And if I can't get insulin under control, I can't get the weight to move. So the very first step in, in weight control, in cholesterol control, in blood pressure control, in my office is controlling insulin and we've got to get insulin down and you're going to find out why that's the factor and what 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 really drives the diseases of in, of, of civilization and why insulin plays such a huge predominant role uh, in that factor number two um, insulin has a lingering effect for up to um, 12 hours so that's the challenge and I, hopefully my dog will stop barking and you won't get that echo in the back of your head um, he likes to do that uh, so ho hopefully he'll, he'll stop come here charming um, so again, insulin kicks in. Um, as soon as you eat starch or carbohydrate, that insulin starts to rise and uh, that insulin will stay up and running for up to 12 hours. I may have to grab him. Come here, Charming. Well, let, me, let me grab him real quick so it doesn't irritate. Charming, come here. Come here, buddy. Oh. <laughs> All right. Didn't mean to leave you. This is, this is Prince Charming. He is uh, probably 78 in dog years. Um, so I'm gonna let him sit here and he'll He'll growl at us. As he, you're on live. You're all on live all around the world. Um, he's upset because he wants to go to bed. Show us the dog. Yes, this is this is charming. He's upset. You can hear him growling at you. I'm gonna set him down here. Hopefully, he won't growl and bark. And you won't. Yeah, he's a growl. He's he's mad because he, it's, it's, it's past his bedtime and he gets a little grumpy. You know, those old dogs they get a little grumpy, kind of like old men. Um, anyway, so. 12 hours is what insulin stays on for when it kicks on. So if, um, so if you give, I, I am insulin resistant, and if you give me a piece of bread, my body essentially produces 10 times the insulin in response to that piece of bread, and I will, and I will have that insulin linger for up to 12 hours at 10 times the normal release rate. So insulin being the major hormone that drives weight gain, I will store 10 times the weight for the next 12 hours. So no matter what I do, no matter how hard I concentrate, no matter how hard I exercise, as long as insulin's on and insulin's high, I'm in deep trouble. So that's the challenge. Um, how did you figure that out? I don't know, um, but that's what it does. That's why if I walk by a bakery, I gain weight. Um, some of us do that, that's the challenge. Now, um, what is actually insulin resisting? Somebody asked me the other day, I said, you have insulin resistance. And he goes, well, what's it resisting? I don't quite get it. So what are the signs of insulin resistance? What's it, what is it resisting? Well, number one, you have insulin resistance if you overproduce insulin in response to any carbohydrate, any starch, anything like that. Um, 
major sign of insulin resistance, and people are always surprised by this, but skin tags. Uh, these, little, these little pedunculated bits of skin that, that, that either on the neck, under the arms, around the groin, they look like um, flesh-colored moles. Uh, they, they don't have any discoloration to them. Usually, sometimes they do, but, but uh, that's a, that is a, a pathognomonic sign of uh, insulin resistance. So you, if you have a skin tag, you got it. <clears throat> um, that's the... Uh, um, well, and, and let me, yeah, so the question is asked, if you have insulin resistance, do you always have it? It can worsen and it can get better. And the amazing thing is that with a, a carbohydrate resist, a, a low carbohydrate or a ketogenic diet, it will actually improve in over a period of over 18, 18 to 24 months to the point where you may not even be able to see it. Now, you will always be genetically predisposed to it. So if you eat the standard American diet or what we call the SAD diet, um, you're going you're gonna to see that happen. Now, if you're taking insulin on top of insulin resistance, it's going to be even harder to lose weight. And so that's where the, the ketogenic diet comes into play so powerfully and predominantly is that it, it's, it's the only diet that allows you to lower the insulin loads in, in an appropriate way. And that's what we're going to talk about. And that's what my book's going to be talking about is how to do that. Now, um, there are essentially five stages of insulin resistance. And, and uh, so let me, let me point these out. Now, stage number one is essentially an overproduction of insulin. And if, I, if you check my insulin when I'm fasting, it should be between um, one and five. Most people who are insulin resistant, it's over five. And at the two hour mark, if, I, if you do what's called a, a, one, a three hour glucose tolerance test, meaning if you, I give you 75 grams of sugar to drink and then I check your blood sugar and your insulin at the initial point at the one hour, the two hour and the three hour mark, then um, I, I, I can check your gl glucose level, which is the blood sugar, and the insulin level. Now, at the fasting mark, before you drink the drink, it should be somewhere between one and five. If you're over five, you have insulin resistance. Um, as you progress down that road, we see that insulin go up higher than it ought to go. Um, and in, in many cases, it spikes up significantly. In stage two, where you're overproducing the insulin, you'll see a fasting insulin that's literally well let me back up stage one the fasting number will probably be somewhere around five but the two hour mark will be notably higher than 15 to 20. Um, at stage two your fasting insulin which normally should be less than five is between six and 30 which is predominant and you're going to see an elevated what we call post prandial blood sugar which means two hours after your meal that blood sugar should be down under 140 you're going to be above 140 still at the two hour mark so a high insulin load lingering for two three hours with a high blood sugar that doesn't quite recover over and over that two to three hour window that's stage two stage three insulin resistance is an overproduction and you can hear my dogs growling at each other you can hear it, 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 you'll the insulin is uh at fasting level is uh, 11 to, hold on one second. They're over here irritated at each other. Come here, Coco, come here. <clears throat> Uh, chronic impaired sleep contributes to insulin. Yes, it does. So if you're not getting enough sleep, it, it raises the insulin loads. So stage three, uh, no, stage two, insulin is between six and 30 um, in a fasting state and you have an elevated postprandial sugar. Stage number three, um, <laughs> it's not a night for podcast. My dogs are not happy. Um, they're all ground at each other. Um, I like horses and cowboy hats too. Um, come here, Coco. Stop growling. Come here. Um, stage three. I'm getting sidetracked by my dogs. Worsening overproduction of insulin. Uh, insulin level is somewhere between 11 and 30. You'll see an elevated fasting sugar. So your fasting sugar should be down at 99 or less, but your fasting sugar will be up around 1, 102, 105, 107. And your postprandial, your two hour after meal sugar is also above 140. So that's stage three insulin resistance. Now, stage number four insulin resistance um, is essentially type two diabetes. Now, stages one, two, and three occur 20 to 25 years before you're ever a type two diabetic. This will be in my book. Yes, yes, it will be. Um, I still do OMM, yes. So the, the periscope's asking me questions about manipulation. Yes, I do that in my office still. So stage four is essentially type two diabetes. And in type two, two diabetes, you're producing um, between your, your fasting sugar is going to be somewhere around, it'll be somewhere higher than 31 fasting, your, your insulin load at the fasting mark. So it should be down under five and yours is at 31. So you're, so overnight you're producing literally five to six times the normal amount of insulin in response to the meal you had 12 to 14 hours beforehand. That's why, so you're actually storing fat overnight. You're, you're sleeping and you're gaining weight. And that's essentially what's happening to many of us. Um, the concern is that, you know, as a diabetic, um, your two hour insulin level is dramatically um, elevated to o over 150. You know, so you're, you're, you, this is, this number is huge, uh, d d d tremendously huge. Now those on Periscope are seeing my whited out face and it makes me look like I'm, uh, I'm tired. Um, 
But anyway, switch over to Facebook and you can see me on there. Um, now, stage five insulin resistance is um, basically beta cell failure. So the pancreas has these beta cells that produce the insulin. They've actually been on overdrive for literally 20 or 30 years. And what ends up happening is that that insulin level um, just they, you can't keep up. And those are people who were type 2 diabetics that now have to go on insulin. That was like my father. So he was on insulin for literally 10 years of his life, ended up dying at 58, weighed almost 400 pounds because he had huge amounts of insulin that he was both producing and having to give himself to keep up with what was happening. And so that's essentially those patients who were type 2 now progress to what we now define as type 1 or insulin dependent. And that's the challenge. Um, <clears throat> And that's the, the big issue. So that's stage five. So those are the five stages of insulin resistance. And if you understand that, you understand uh, more than most uh, about how obesity works, how the diseases of civilization work. Now, what does that mean in relationship to the diseases of civilization? Well, essentially, diabetes is not its own disease. It's the fourth stage of insulin resistance. Hypertension, elevated blood pressure, is driven by a high insulin load. And uh, par pardon my dogs. Come here, Coco. Sorry, she's back there growling at the other dog. Um, they both want to go to bed, and they're saying, "Why aren't you in bed yet?" Um, it's late, and and so they're growling at each other. Anyway, so so that's so uh, cholesterol. Cholesterol is not eat, driven by the fat we eat. Um, if you eat fat, it doesn't raise your cholesterol. If you eat sugar and you overproduce insulin, that overproduction of insulin stimulates the production of triglyceride, which is the passenger inside the cholesterol molecule. And guess what? You have elevated cholesterol. It's not driven by fat. It's driven by insulin in response to your body's um, genetically encoded ability to produce insulin in response to that sugar. So essentially insulin is like a dull key. So if you give me a piece of bread, my body um, produces, should produce a slice worth of bread, but my body, because I'm insulin resistant, produces 10 times that. So if I eat a piece of bread, my body thinks I ate the whole dang loaf. If I eat a bowl of cereal, my body thinks I ate the whole box. If I ate a donut, my body thinks I ate the baker's dozen. And that's the challenge. Um, so that's the big issue that arises there. And so the, the challenge is the key is dull. And the reason is the reason that you have insulin resistance is the key, insulin is the key that opens the door in the cell that lets the glucose or the sugar get in to be used as fuel. And that, um, the challenge though is the key is not quite working. And so, so the doorman stands there trying to get the key open. Come here, Coco, come here. Um, sorry, she's barking at everybody or growling at the other dog. Um, and you guys are probably cooking it up on there. So Coco, come here. Come here, come here, Coco. You're picking it up all across the world. <clears throat> so anyway, the, uh, the key is dull and it doesn't get the door open and your body overproduces insulin in that response. Insulin resistance is inherited. It's directly inherited. Now, is insulin re resistance a, a, a disease? No, it's a syndrome. Um, insulin resistance, it, we, we, we know that it has a predominant drive through the Anglo and, and uh, Eastern European uh, genetics that was essentially a protective mechanism for those people that lived in the snow all the time and never saw sugar. Um, but when you introduce Bisquick and beer and you now live in a world where 85% of, of what's on your plate is starch or sugar, your body goes, woohoo, and it produces all this insulin. And so it's a genetic predisposition that was, I think, originally designed to prevent us and keep us alive during famines and starvation. But in America, because we produce, we eat so many carbohydrates, it's now producing tremendous obesity and all of the diseases of civilization related to that obesity. So that's one of the challenges that arises. Now, <clears throat> what do we know about this broken signaling mechanism? Well, we know for sure that there are two receptors that are broken. One of them is called a GLUT2 receptor, and the other one's called an ABCA1 receptor. And, and unless you're a medical student or a scientist, you probably don't even know what that means. But basically, it's just that it's the signaling mechanism that when sugar, sugar or glucose is present, how much insulin is being produced is, is that driver. And this is not speeded, and no, it's not pre-recorded, and I am Dr. Adam Nelly. I'm a board-certified family physician and an obesity medicine specialist in the northwest corner of the Phoenix Valley uh, in a city called Surprise, and I'm coming to you live uh, late in the evening uh, on, on Periscope uh, and on uh, Facebook Live. I'm dual streaming right now. I talk fast, so you may have to back this up and play it in the slow speed to understand it. Um, yes, I talk fast because there's so much good stuff you need to know. All right, now, um, what causes this broken mechanism to occur? Well, the bigger the fat cells get, the more broken it can become, and the more 
fructose you eat in the presence of high triglycerides, the more the signals get broken too. And what, do you, what happens when you eat donuts and you have insulin resistance predisposition? Your triglycerides go up and you probably eat more fructose, which is one half of the sugar molecule, and that ends up causing this insulin resistance to propagate and get worse and worse and worse. So high, fr high triglycerides and high intake of fructose, which is the sugar in fruit, uh, drives this process. Um, so bad nutrition over the last 50 years has made this worse. So um, we, we've been told for years and years that fat's bad, so you need to cut out the fat. Well, when you cut out the fat, you're going to be hungry, so you, what do you do? You eat more starch, more sugar, uh, and that's going to have more fructose. It's going to drive the triglycerides up and drive the process of, of this weight gain, drive the process of insulin resistance. And we also know that a sedentary lifestyle plays a role here too. So you know, I live in Waddell with a bunch of farmers around me, and, and they, they burn about 2,500 calories per day getting on and off their tractors and doing what they do. Um, I burn about 300 calories calories per day running, jumping up and run, running from room to room, jumping to conclusions in my office. And so um, I, I do, we do a lot less physical activity today than we did 50 to 100 years ago, and that plays a big role as well. So that's important to understand. So um, that is the definition of insulin resistance in kind of a nutshell. 15 minutes uh, with dogs barking in the background and interruptions and, and growling animals in, in the background. Um, anyway, sorry if I'm freezing. Hopefully it's not freezing on Facebook Live. Um, but, uh, and if it is, you can uh, pick up the, uh, pick up the, uh, the, the replay on the back end. Um, so you should not replace the fat. You should eat the fat and replace the sugar. That's the key. Um, so go back and watch my previous Facebook Lives, watch my previous Periscopes, and you can see what we, we talk about a ketogenic diet. We talk about um, low-carbohydrate, high-fat diets. Uh, go to my website at docmuscles.com. That's docmuscles.com. You can see it down here on Periscope or up there on Facebook Live. Uh, click on the link there, and you can type in uh, ketosis, type in low-carb diets, and it'll give you lots of information about that. Um, so replace the starchy carbs with fat. Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly correct. Um, good questions, you guys. Thanks for hanging in there. And um, the book coming out, um, for those of you that are watching, it's, call, it's called The Keto Cure is what it's coming up. And we're going to talk about um, how ketosis fixes the, probably the 10 or 11 most common diseases of civilization. Um, yes, your doctor can test for insulin resistance by, through a simple blood test uh, checking insulin. It is great. Yeah, good title, isn't it? Um, I can't wait to have it out either. I'm so excited. So you're getting, the, you're getting the, the preliminary with this here. Can excess exercise create insulin resistance? No, it actually improves it. Specifically, resistance training does, not cardio. Um, uh, but uh, the, the key is that any exercise plays a role, but insulin, uh, insulin resistance is affected most effectively by resistance type training. Uh, yes, me and Jimmy Moore are writing a book together. I, I seem like a cool guy. I think I'm a cool guy. My wife thinks I'm a cool guy. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for staying up late uh, on a, a Tuesday evening. Again, I'm Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board-certified family physician and board-certified medical bariatrician. I'll pop my credentials back up here. Uh, you can go to docmuscles.com and see my information on Facebook Live. If you, uh, there's, a little, there's a banner at the bottom there on, on Facebook Live. Click on there, and you can find out more about me. Um, I do have a six-part free uh, uh, mini course uh, through the email that comes to you, so register for that mini course. Uh, it'll give you some more information about what a ketogenic diet is and how, how to get it started started. That's a way to kickstart it. Um, again, uh, share this out to your friends and family and neighbors, anybody who think may, be, may benefit from learning about a ketogenic diet. And you guys have a great evening. Um, if you have questions, tag me in the Facebook live post or in Periscope uh, about questions I can answer in the future. Uh, I appreciate yeah, yeah, Keto Talk is the bomb. Uh, it's, uh, I'm also on Keto Talk. So uh, if you go to ketotalk.com, you can listen to Jimmy Moore and I talk about this all the time. Uh, we just did our 50th podcast, which will come out on Thursday. Um, is the only way someone can be obese if they're insulin resistant? Usually. Now, there are other causes genetically of obesity, but 85% of the people who walk through my door who have obesity that is driven uh, by insulin resistance. And so if you treat the insulin resistance, you've treated 85% of the problem in most people, not all, but in most people. Um, have a great evening. Keep the fat high, keep the carbs low, and have a good night. Take good care, guys. We'll see you later.